Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I hope you've all had a really good start to the new year. We're one week in. Yeah, it's gonna be a good year. I think so. I'm really looking forward to getting out and planting. We're probably all in the same boat. We're all, we've got that pent up winter energy and we wanna just like, Christmas is done. Yeah. So we want to get Wait, out. Wait, is it done? Have we it gone is. past Epiphany Sunday yet? <laughs> have we? I don't think we have. I think it's this Sunday. Oh, well. I think it's today. Either way. I'm excited for plants. So today's recap video is sponsored by Gorilla Carts, which I will talk about in just a minute. The first thing we wanted to talk about though was the Grand Garden Show. Canceled. So the show was scheduled for the end of August. We made a video about it the week of Christmas talking about pre-registration and it sold out in... Fast. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't paying that close of attention, but I did see people comment on our post saying that it sold out two hours after we posted because mm -hmm. they wanted tickets and couldn't Do you know how many tickets they were even selling? I at? think it was somewhere between 600 and 700. They they stopped selling at a certain point. Uh -huh. I think that they have a little bit of wiggle room around I, that number. I thought they were going to do more this year because we were going to do like the whole hotel instead of just part of it. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I don't know all I the details either. exactly. Yeah. We don't know all the details about all the things, but um, enough to tell you that it wasn't the cost of the event that canceled it. Mm -hmm. I think that was the most common thing I saw online was, oh, well, they've priced themselves out. It's way too expensive. It's too um, exclusive, that sort of yeah. thing. But given the fact that it sold out so fast, that wasn't the reason. It is an expensive show. I'm not going to lie. Um, but the island itself, it's a destination. It's a whole package deal. You know, there's a lot that goes on at the show and it's not cheap to put on. It's not a moneymaker for proven winners to do it. Um, so that was not the reason. It was mainly logistics. Yeah. I don't think it was as juicy as people thought. I saw people, man, the rumor mill. Like well, somebody, like the health of one of the owners had yeah, nothing like, to oh, do with it. Yeah, like, oh, it must have been the health of yeah. one of the owners. And then somebody came and was like, I think I think they announced that he died. No oh, one, are no you one, serious? Yeah, I didn't no, see that. No one has died. Where did these things start? Like, why? I think people just take little bits and pieces of things that they've heard and mm -hmm. are trying to connect the dots. And, you know, it's just maybe human nature. But... It, I don't think that it was nearly as juicy as everybody thinks it was. It was just logistics, and it was just unfortunate yeah. that um, they thought everything was great until it wasn't, mm -hmm. and then they couldn't proceed. So yeah. um, they are looking for suggestions, though. I'll try to find the link for Where Proven Winners, because I think they have a survey or something like that. Um, they're looking for new venues. So. Mm -hmm. If one of your things was that this show was unaffordable, um, they're open to suggestions. So They suggested our house at one point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, I uh, know. <laughs> well, the problem with our house is a couple things. One, there's the Grand Garden show was awesome. Yes. Because people could stay at the Grand Hotel. The majority of people could stay at the Grand Hotel. And there was this camaraderie where, yeah. you know, you're sitting on the front porch and you've got a gardener from Texas to one side and you've got a gardener from you know, Maine on the other mm -hmm. side and you can chat about this like common thing that you love Yeah, and you're all, you know, you're seeing these beautiful gardens. Very few venues seem to have everything that the Grand Garden Show had, which, mm -hmm. you know, was the speakers, the hotel, the place where you could meet and have mm -hmm. the speakers, you know, do Well, many thing. different rooms. There was like the huge room where like the keynote speak speakers did their thing or like the welcome speech and mm -hmm. all of that and then there were smaller rooms where you do breakout sessions and right. they had different you know educational things but not only that you've got like the views the gorgeous the gorgeousness yeah. the charm of, of this the island. island and many gardens in walking distance like yeah. just right next door to the hotel um and then the ability to go through like go to the backyards of many of these gardens you right. know we were able to tour so many of them with jack and it was amazing Jack Barnwell, who designed and maintained many of these gardens. Uh, he did sell his business on the island last year. So, you know, it was like a transition year last mm -hmm. year at the show. The hotel sold too. That was in the Yeah, the news. new owner I, of the hotel. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that went on. Um, like not necessarily bad things. It's just different, you know? Nothing lasts forever. No. You know, um, but yeah, so they are looking for different venues, different opportunities, and they're just open to anybody's suggestions on, on what they could do. You know, there's a lot of places where it's like there's a ho great hotel that people could stay at, but there's no like private gardens that you could tour within mm -hmm. walking distance. Right. It's really hard to put all those things together. Also the meals, like the, well, yeah. the cocktail hour on the porch, and then you've got the multi-course meals, which are all part of like the package that, mm -hmm. you know, of the Grand Garden Show tickets. Um, they had, like, the, it took care of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot of different moving pieces that... Um, it just made it work so well. Yeah. They should do, New they should do Newport, Rhode Island. 
Yeah, wouldn't yeah. that be cool? Oh, that would be cool. That would but be again, cool. you'd have to find like, is there even a hotel? I don't know. I don't like a convention center where everybody can at least meet. But the thing is, the Grand Hotel it was so neat. Yeah. And everything about it was charming and all of that. You don't get that at a convention center. You need a big, a big, yeah, old building like that. Um, okay, so we were going to talk about our house, why, you know, it wouldn't because it did oh, come up in the yeah. in the you know like well let's go to Aaron and Laura's house, but like we uh, maybe don't maybe in like ten years we don't have the hotel, you know, to to house people and also like security is a thing for because it's our home mm-hmm. and um, there's just a lot of you know there, it's also just our house and mm-hmm. we feel like I don't know we're here and we feel like it's modest especially because we've planted so much new well it's just baby it's just yeah yeah, it feels like in 10 years like it might be really it could be spectacular but yeah you know like a lot of a lot of it's ripped up right now yeah and we've got a long way to go yeah i mean it's just a work in progress that we get to share with you guys which is really fun yeah um and there are high moments for sure i mean hardly going in huge high moment flower shed high moment the flower garden itself but then you know the whole thing like the thing as a whole like we've got a pathway that's a third of the way down right. out there, you know, <laughs> and it'll take us probably another year to finish that. Yeah. So there's a lot of those things that we're just not comfortable. Like, and you know, up. we can only get so many people through here. And so you would have that, that thing of like, what do you do? Like a lottery system, you know, cause you want to keep the tickets affordable, but then we're not making any money. It's a, it's a ton of work it to is. put on something a like that. A lot of labor and a lot of plant So material. then you're kind of mm-hmm. left with like, well, what do you do? Like not make a lot of money, but put in tons of work to put on an event like that mm-hmm. because you can't get very and many people through. And at what time through. of the year here? Like maybe yeah. May. Like May is our high point of the year. And after that, it gets so hot and spider might run in. Yeah. <laughs> By the end of the season, you're kind of like, mm. I can take pictures of like this little section right here. But right. the thing as a whole, there's like things are tired Yeah. pretty fast. The little pockets anyway. you can take pictures of, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're working on it. I don't know. Yeah, we we talked about uh, Biltmore. We talked about Greenbrier. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that other one? Long. Oh, oh Longview, I think yeah, it is. Is in, that what it's in called? Pennsylvania? Yeah. But again, you just have to have all the you know the hotel, the gardens, right. the space right. to do events. So all of that said, it had nothing to do with cost. It had nothing to do with owner's health or somebody dying or anything juicy. Or winter. I saw another thing that was saying uh, winter damage oh, from, you no. know, it didn't have to do with that either. No. It was just logistics. Yeah. It was, I don't think it was it's all like that juicy. It's like boring stuff. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's that. So we may, if we end up going to some other shows, yeah. We'll let you know. All right, guys, let's talk gorilla carts. I have used a lot of different gardening carts throughout the years, both here in our own garden and down at the garden center. And gorilla carts has a line of steel carts that we use a lot down at the garden center in particular because they have sides that you can remove. And when we wanted to haul lots of flats of plants, we would remove the sides and you could kind of let the flats dangle off the sides and fit a lot, make your trips worth it. And then you could put the sides back on when you wanted to haul tools or debris, things like that. So they were really versatile that way kind of nice you can make it like a mini flatbed trailer it's exactly yeah exactly and i've used them a lot here too in the spring when we get Mm -hmm. our flats of plants and we need to move a lot around Um, they also have a line of poly dump carts in multiple sizes they have a four cubic foot one for smaller spaces would have been perfect for our townhouse size garden um, because i had a very narrow i made our side yard very narrow with all the plants (laughs) so uh, that is a perfect size for you know smaller jobs it's less heavy there's a seven cubic foot size which is my all-time favorite cart ever (laughs) ever um it hauls a lot i feel like for how light it still is it can handle it it can handle up to 1200 pounds but the good thing about all these carts a lot of them can handle a lot of weight um but if i loaded that cart up with 1200 pounds there's no way i could pull it physically but every single one of the carts has the ability to hook it up to an atv a gator uh lawn tractor Mm -hmm. we've showed it in a video in the past how easy it is to do that but the poly dump carts my favorite feature on those well there's two they have big wheels all of them have big wheels we have a lot of gravel here so it's nice that you can pull them around easily but those poly dump carts have the dump feature where you pull the lever or the handle in the front of the cart and the whole thing lifts and dumps your debris easily without you having to physically you know, get it back out of the cart. And Gorilla Carts has been gracious enough to let us give two of these carts away to two of you guys. So go to GorillaMade.com, look at the list of carts that they have available, and then comment below this video on which model you would like to receive. And we will pick winners and probably announce it next recap video. Yeah. Uh, 
be wary of scams. So yes. if somebody responds and says you won something, um, you need to be able to click on the link, click on the channel, and it takes you to our channel. If it takes you to some other page yeah. that's, you know, just because it has Laura's face yeah. doesn't mean... It'll look legit. It might even say our name with my picture, but if you click on our channel, it'll take you to our channel with all of our videos down below. Yeah. Um, if it's a scammer, there won't be our videos down below in that area. So yeah, be aware of that. Such a pain. Yeah. I'm guessing. Also, it's the GCG7 or smaller. Yeah. I think the, the 10 is kind of hard to ship. Yeah, they do have a giant one, which is handy for large spaces. It holds yeah. 1,500 pounds, but that's a pretty big They even cart. have bigger steel ones than that. Like, oh. they're like almost like full-on trailer size. They but, also have, anyway. you guys, hose reels. They have, uh, or hose carts. Mm -hmm. They've got um, ladders, which we've done a whole ladder video before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we use them all the time. And, and they've got wheelbarrows. So yeah. lots of different things to look at. So thank you, Gorilla Carts, for sponsoring today's video. So let's jump into the videos from this last week. <laughs> you guys don't know it, but we've been in here for a really, really long time. <laughs> it took us like an hour to get to this point. So first video was the 2022 highlights, a look back at an amazing year. It's always fun to sit and yeah. look back at those things because you're like, oh yeah, we did get a lot done. Cause sometimes you don't feel that way. You know, you yeah. kind of get bogged down by other things and that was just fun. Loved it. So Ed and Shell said, so keeping the Hartley floor clean, maybe try a small electric leaf blower, get a cheap one and they don't have the power that the good one or a gas powered one would have. The only problem with a blower inside is that you're just blowing your dust to another location. It's not actually cleaning it up. Trust me, I have experience with this area. <laughs> I've tried it. Oh my gosh, not in the Hartley, but yeah. down at Andrews, they have this huge Quonset building where we uh, store bunch of different store props and like pallets of soil and stuff and it's huge i don't know how big do you think that is it's massive it's probably like it uh, feels massive to me yeah well, i don't know like 75 by 50 yeah. or something like that unheated or uncool unheated and not air conditioned and it's a metal shell so i decided one summer day it was over 100 degrees that i was going to clean that quonset out because you know dog days you're looking for things to do so i took a blower to the back of that <laughs> quonset <laughs> there's a door way in the front and I just tried to blow out all the crap that was in there. Such a bad idea. My face was just, it was brown from dirt and just like grit in my teeth. And my parents <laughs> took one look at me when I got out of there. And Monica helped me that day. And they were like, you guys can just go home. Go home, <laughs> go home and take a shower. You can't help. You can't like represent our business right yeah. now. Um, anyway, I mean, I would love for it to be that easy, but it's just not. Uh, Elle said, couldn't those boxwoods be transplanted? I think that's in reference to the circle head. Oh, yeah. We talked about doing we that. We tried. To do the circle ones? The Yeah, the circle. Oh, we tried to see if anybody wanted to try to transplant them. We didn't yeah. really have a space we wanted to move them to. They're so old and established. And so, like, once you actually spread them out and look inside, there was only, like, this much green, you know, yeah. in there. And the rest of it was just woody branches. So if you separated the configuration that they were it would be really hard to rebound that plant and make it look good. I don't know if it actually would have been worth the money for somebody because you would you would have you couldn't do it by hand. Yeah, and if you did machines. do it by hand it would take way too long. Mm -hmm. You could just buy new boxwoods again. Yeah. Um I just don't think it's worth anybody's effort really. And that's why nobody really took us up on the offer. Yeah. I put it on Facebook seeing if anybody wanted to yeah. try. We had one person who was considering mildly it. interested. Yeah. Uh, hey, Melissa said, I'd like to see a video on limbing up trees, do's and don'ts. I haven't really been able to find too much on that. Is it ever too early or too late to start? Or have they done one already? That's your department, Aaron. Well, I don't really know. I just go out there and just trim stuff up. I don't really know that there are a lot of do's and don'ts. I think... Well, I think... Uh, you don't want to take off too much at right, one time. Right, like it's, what, 20%? Yeah. Um, and also, like, taking big things off. Um, if it's a, already a huge established tree, I would probably call a tree service, like, or an arborist, somebody who makes sure... Like, our tree service that we use is super knowledgeable, um, so I'm really thankful for that, and I don't know that all of them are. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to get recommendations from somebody who's used a tree service in your area, or get a recommendation from your local garden center, um, somebody who knows about trees who can come and do the proper job because the last thing you want to do on a big tree is mess yeah. something up. Um, for smaller trees, I mean, just take after them a little bit at a time, and that's what we do. Even in the middle of the season, if we have a branch, you know, kind of cruising down, we take care of it. Or and I cruising think, toward the inside of the right, tree, you know, yeah. things like that. Those are kind of obvious things that you can yeah. take care of. And dormant, you know, we'll do some trimming here when they're dormant still. And I think that's a good time to do it like early spring. I will say I've watched our 
local tree company, you know, prune trees, and they go hard. They're severe. They yeah. are pretty severe. Like you look at the tree and you're like, ah. remember, uh, he was like, I think I made, I think I made Laura mad yeah. <laughs> with the tree, and I. He didn't they did make, make your mom mad uh, when they did the locust. It was years ago. It was maybe like close to ten years at this they point. Took so much out. They took, but you know what? It it needed it. I know. And it did. now it's a beautiful tree. It is, and she's like, I'm glad they did that. Yeah. Now, uh, it was the mulberry tree up front. Uh, mm-hmm. It had the rot in it. And he took so much out. And I wasn't mad. I was just shocked. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, the tree. Um, and it looks great now. And yeah. I think he just said, "It's this tree is not going to last forever. It's got rot all over in it. But I think I just bought you several more years. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It's nice to have somebody who knows what they're doing. Because I wouldn't have gone and taken that much out. I would have been well, too Well, I afraid. mean, on a big tree, it's like big chainsaws. I mean, you know, he's climbing well, yeah. up in the middle yeah. of the tree. And They've got, got the, proper, the boom and everything. Yeah. Proper equipment and all that. Uh, Kimberly said, do you have to worry about your plants breaking dormancy during this warm spell? Um, I don't. We're not getting warm enough here uh, for plants to start tulips breaking Tulips sometimes will come up Pop early. Through. Or maybe not tulips, but like... Um, Daffs a little bit. Yeah. I had tulips come up early once, and I think we just covered them with a little bit more mulch. Everything was fine. Um, I think that year the stalks, the stems were a little bit shorter than normal. We've had little issues with that because we've had too much warmth and not enough moisture some of our winters. We're getting a lot this year, though. A lot of moisture, a yeah. A lot of moisture, which is awesome. I think we've got like five days of rain in the forecast right mm-hmm. now, which is fantastic. I'm just really that hoping that's... snow in the mountains. Yeah, snow in the mountains. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peyton said, we absolutely love watching your family videos, antiquing recipes, etc. Have you considered making a channel for vlogs? Considering you re- uh, record a ton of the gardening, I suppose this would be dividing up the footage half educational, half home life, and upload just gardening to Garden Answer. Just a thought. I haven't thought about that, actually. I have. Have and you? Here, here's my thought, is that if we... Um, we're not going to post like double content. So we don't have enough time to where mm-hmm. like if you go to Boise and go shopping with your mm-hmm. mom, say, that means that we're not going to make another video home, you know, mm-hmm. about gardening. So, and we don't clickbait. So people can just choose to not watch the videos that mm-hmm. they're not interested in. And I, I, it's just easier, I think, for mm-hmm. us to do it that way and not have multiple channels. We, you know, we started the this channel, the Highlights channel, and I think my original idea with starting that was that it was going to be clips mm-hmm. from videos. And that didn't really pan out. And then YouTube started doing their whole shorts thing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's in a vertical format, which we never really have it's jumped hard, on board you guys, with. When, when we post as, much, as many videos as we do, uh, it leaves very little time to cultivate. <laughs> To cultivate other things. Yeah. Like to think about filming vertical stuff. I'm right. like, I don't know when we would have time to do that. Like you have to pick one. Right. You have to pick a platform to try to cultivate, I think. Unless you've yeah. got a massive team or multiple people working on filming stuff. And we don't have that. So yeah. you kind of just have to pick and choose what works and what fits your schedule and your life. And then just kind of go with it. Yeah. And we kind of have gone all in on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, we're probably missing out, you know, on like the TikTok and... I don't really feel like we're missing out. I feel like everything is just wonderful. Yeah. You know, I mean, growth is great. Like big growth on new platforms is mm-hmm. great, but I, I don't know. Yeah. I think it, there's too much chase involved too. Like, yeah. I don't want, right. I don't want my life to be continuing to chase things. Right. I don't like that feeling. Sure. So I'm happy yeah. with how it is. Uh, Deborah said, do you take all the Christmas lights off everything in the spring? Uh, we take them off as soon as the weather's nice. In fact, Paul and Bethany have made a huge dent yeah. in the lights already. We will wait until it's like the, the roof is good and dry yeah. before taking them off the house. There's still like patches of ice on the north side of the house. So and I don't gonna... know what Paul's plan is. Uh, we're going to need to rent another lift to take off lights Juniper. up high. Yeah. Um, I don't know what his plan But you can do that at any time. I mean, like... The forecast is showing in the high 40s. Mm-hmm. That's but a great lot of rain. weather to take. A lot yeah, of rain, though. Right. So you want to wait till it's a kind of a dry day. Uh, but they'll be off here pretty quick. I imagine the sun's out today, which is oh, so nice. Martha said, once you get water to the pasture property, how about using part of that land for a horse barn and a horse or two? I've thought about it yeah. a lot. I've looked at lots of different barns. Uh, we would probably build one much the same as what we have here ish mm-hmm. like three bays one one bay would be stalls inside outside stalls um and then we'd have storage and stuff in the other two which we desperately could use that feels like a long ways off oh yeah i mean it's like it's something fun to dream, though. yeah it's fun it's fun yeah. to talk about and something that we'd like to do but man i just don't see doing that in the near 
like in the next couple of years. No. But you know what? Maybe that's okay. Like if we did it in, you know, 10 years, Samantha would be... 12. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe Benjamin would be into horses too. Maybe. He'd be 15. Mm-hmm. He hasn't seemed as interested as Samantha has in animals. Right. Mm-hmm. That is kind of why I wasn't really thinking that way. But you know, kids can change yep. their interests. Yeah, they sure can. And quickly switch. Uh, Tara said, if you ever moved, would you take the Hartley with you? So they, they did say, the crew said when they came in that they have moved some Hartleys. Because the Hartley portion is just the stuff from the brick up. So the metal and the glass. That's the Hartley portion of the Hartley. Plus all the plans. The engineered plans yeah, and all of that. they help you with engineering. Yeah. Um, but everything else is done by local contractors. contractors. So, I mean, it's possible. I can't imagine a situation where you would move a Hartley um, unless you were like bulldozing your property. Sure, because like if you were selling it and somebody came to look at it, I would think that they would want that. I would. <laughs> yeah, and like who would want uh, who would want the foundation of a greenhouse without the top part of it? Yeah. You know, so right. uh, like yeah, if if we found out that like our property was being taken over by eminent domain and a freeway was going right through, like yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. Next video was hyacinth update, starting lysianthus seeds and potting house plants. So I gave you an update on the hyacinths in the Hartley cold frames. We started six flats of lysianthus seeds and I potted up two house plants here in the studio. Heather said, I love your enthusiasm. Some questions for you. One, could you elaborate and explain the benefits of adding stones or moss as top dressing for plants? I noticed that your mother had stones in some of her plants. Purely aesthetic, honestly. It's just to cover the soil. I mean, it helps a little bit with moisture loss, I guess, but not not enough to make it worth putting it on for that reason alone it's mostly just to cover the soil so it looks pretty um two it's obviously cold why don't you wear boots although i love those shoes i just because your feet are hot yeah like right now i'm bare feet (laughs) i'm barefoot back here i wore slippers out here and then i yeah kick them off and and i get so hot too sometimes like earlier today i went and just stood barefoot outside on the concrete like uh. 38 degrees outside yeah um, so the vans though, I have noticed that like my feet have been hurting a little bit more. <laughs> oh, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to wear sensible shoes. I'm yeah. going to have to start thinking about possibly wearing something different because maybe the support, I need more support. Um, but for now we're rocking the vans. We're going to rock them as long as we can without wrecking my feet. So, so far so good. But, uh, Rebecca said, although you probably won't see this, where do you get the seed starting trays that you're using for the Lysianthus? I get those from Gardener Supply. They're there. Uh, there? They there. are there. They are there. Um, what do they call them? There's like a name. Oh, Growies Seed Starter Kit. Self-watering reservoirs. I have had to pop the tops or the seed trays off the reservoir, and I've got them kind of cockeyed on the tray so that they're not sitting in the water. Lysianthus, you want to be very careful not to overwater them. So those are really one of the only ones that I really watch um, and do that every, on occasion so that they're not sitting there in water. Most all of my other stuff do great in them. Tammy said, do, do you need vermiculite when winter sowing? No. I don't think I used vermiculite at all when I winter sowed. I thought you did. Did I? It's not a bad thing to use vermiculite at any point, and I use it on most all of my seed starting trays. I didn't use it on my lettuce that I have going in the greenhouse because I didn't have any on hand at the moment. Um, But it helps with damping off. It helps with algae. It just helps retain moisture level at that kind of surface level. Um, So I might have used it winter sowing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I'm going to do any any winter sowing this year. I've done it the last several years, and I kind of just am not feeling it this year. I, I was thinking about that. I feel like if you don't do it, we should still make a video like showing because we have so many new followers every year. Mm-hmm. I feel like it would be good just to have a video showing how to do Maybe it because it's do such like a useful. Poppies. poppies are really, oh, snapdragons are great for winter. Yeah. So maybe I'll just do a few showing some of those those things. Yeah. It does feel useful for a lot of people because yeah. it's like a really accessible way for a lot of people to it get really into doing is. it. It really is. I just always end up kind of like forgetting. We get, like I said, I think I said earlier, maybe I didn't, maybe it was just you and I talking about, we got so many irons in the fire that some things kind of fall through the cracks sometimes. And I feel mm-hmm. like the winter sewing tubs because they're always tucked back somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I kind of forget about those sometimes. It's tough when you've been gardening for a long time. You find the things, you know, when you do it every year, it makes sense to invest in the the nice thing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because Or it's whatever like, you find that works the best. Yeah, right. For you. But that's all not as accessible to people who are just starting out. Like they're it not going to invest the money. It takes years to amass stuff. I remember when we were very first married and I remember thinking like, geez, I wish I could decorate my whole house Mm -hmm. or, you know, I wish I could whatever. And my mom would tell me like, it took me 30 years to gather all this stuff, you know, and it's going to take you a while and you don't want to just go out and buy any old thing. You want to wait until you find the things that speak to you and that you love. Uh, And I think that was good advice. And I think that's just the way it is when you start any new hobby, it Mm -hmm. takes a long time to get those things. And then sometimes you get the things and figure out that doesn't work the best for you and you need to get different things. I don't know. It's just a constant process. Sue Ann said, my family and I had this conversation recently after the Arctic blast swept through the country recently. You mentioned we had a white Christmas. In your mind, does that mean you had snow on the ground for Christmas or was it actively snowing on Christmas day? White Christmas to me just means like, if you look out the window, is it white? Sure. (laughs) Is there snow on the ground? I get get how people might say that uh, it needs to be actually snowing on Christmas to be white Christmas because mm-hmm. that feels more festive. It does feel more festive to have for it sure. be snowing. Yeah, but if there's snow on the ground, it's a white Christmas. Yeah, to me. Aldo said, "How does air movement help the seedlings to become strong? Well, just like anything, you add some adversity to its life, and it's gonna toughen up and get stronger. That's essentially what it is. You're building up that seedling's muscles." Mm -hmm. to take on more things like if you don't provide it with some kind of air movement it's going to become this limp weak looking seedling if you try to put that thing outside you're gonna have a heck of a time hardening it off and then planting it out i mean the risk of it dying is way higher so that's such an interesting analogy for life yeah you know like you don't um like i so i i chuckled because i saw the shirt that was like what was it like bring bullying back or something like that? Oh. And like, what a horrible thing, right? Like, yeah. like no one's advocating for bullying. However, sometimes adversity makes you stronger. And mm-hmm. so like, how do you, you know, how do you connect those two things where it's like, you want a certain amount of adversity because we all, you know, you go lift weights. Like you have to actively like tear your muscles mm-hmm. to build them up. And that's a healthy thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, gardening is a healthy thing to do because you're getting up and down and mm-hmm. stuff like that. It's, well, it's, what, it's like how you teach your kids to do chores and you teach them to do things that they don't want to do yeah. and you don't give them everything that they want right. because then you're going to create a something that you don't like Because what you end. want, like what your child wants is maybe to like just sit and watch TV all day or mm-hmm. play games all day. That's not good for That's them. not healthy, yeah. right? But it's like the thing that feels good or At is the, the, moment, easiest, yeah. the easiest path. But it's not going to create the best path for their life. Yeah, but it, it gets really hard when you're talking about things like like bullying where, you know, nobody's saying that we should, there should be more bullying. However, sometimes, you know, you face adversity in your life and it actually is like a really good growth period for Mm -hmm. you. Well, I went through public school for part of my schooling Yeah. and I didn't get bullied, but there was a lot of things like you deal with a lot of personalities and a lot of, um, I don't know, kids that aren't nice to you, Yeah. you know, not everybody's going to like you. And maybe it toughened me up for what we do today. I think maybe what it is is that <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. You go through life and like someone will, you know, you'll put a video out online. Someone will say a mean thing at yeah. some point. Not everybody likes everybody else. That's just a fact of life. And it will never be, you know, we'll never have a utopia where everyone's nice. Yeah. It's just not possible. I don't know why. Like, I Anyway, provide <laughs> your seedlings <laughs> some supplemental air movement. Yeah. <laughs> Make them tough. Oh. Two Blue said, do you have a plan to block the view of your trucks from the Hartley? We have a plan to get the truck parked in the barn. So this next spring, we were going to do it this last fall, and it just didn't work out, which was great for us <laughs> in the end because we were able to get that big blue spruce put in, you yeah. know, without... Yeah. Anyway, we're going to have... Uh, actually, Mike, who did our studio here, he's going to come and build on an overhang that hooks to the back of our barn. It's just going to be like a breezeway kind of thing, just a roof, essentially, that we can drive our gators back behind and park them back here because currently we're using the barn as gator parking. There are covers and stuff for the gators, but like the one... We have a gator parked behind the barn now because it doesn't fit in here, and we have a cover on it, but if we get a hard wind storm it blows off or part of it blows off and it also takes a minute or two to put it on yeah it's not really something that you want to put on multiple times a day right and you know we store a lot of things back there things last longer if you've got them undercover so 
Once we get that done, we'll be able to park the cars, or at least one of the cars in the barn. Mm -hmm. We don't want to block too much of the space, though, in there, because we use that space a lot. Mm -hmm. Off topic, but I was wondering about Samantha. Is her room ready for her? If yes, how did the transition to her own big girl room go? It went... Swimmingly. Yeah, like there was no hiccup at all. Um, You know, we had her in... So I have a large walk-in closet... (laughs) sounds bad that we had she lived in my closet for the first while but it's like a small room it's I, convenient it was being so, convenient. so close to our yeah. room i mean the closet's big enough to have all my stuff which i don't have a tremendous i mean <laughs> amount of things obviously like i've had this for what, three years yeah. i don't know um but it has had room enough for a full-size crib a rocking chair and an ottoman um three shelving like single shelving units for her for samantha's things and and a clothes rod for her she had like plenty of space um and i still had room to walk around and like do things it used to be part of our bedroom and i think that the the owners before us sectioned it off and made it part of a closet or made it into a closet and anyway so that's where she was and it was super comfortable and cozy for her Mm -hmm. um and i was setting up her room her actual room and i was having a little bit of like a hard time thinking about oh moving her to her own room it's gonna be hard it's you know my last baby you know moving out of my space and um we had a plumber come Mm -hmm. to replace the faucets in our bathroom because they were so needing to be replaced and we were having some drainage issues in there leaking and so he needed to be in our bathroom which butts right up to my closet wall and he needed to be like sawing things and Aaron was like we gotta like she needs to nap somewhere maybe we should just take her crib apart get it up into that room so she can nap so we did it like just randomly one day just moved her crib up there and she slept beautifully Mm -hmm. I think the thing that helped though is I had been working on the room I put wallpaper in there and I've been working on moving some things in and um, some little toys so we've been spending time in there playing she was used to the space she knew it was her space so it wasn't like a foreign area also I don't think she cares where she sleeps probably not I care more than she does I feel like she's one of those kids that um, you could just put her down anywhere yeah she never complains about napping Mm -mm. night night yeah night night and she just goes right down yeah yeah. She's a good napper. Yeah. Next video was growing chicken fodder and baking butternut squash bread. So we started some wheat seed to create some chicken fodder. It's basically a supplemental feed in the wintertime when we don't have as much to give them out of the garden or, you know, even as much vegetable scraps. We just naturally have more in the summertime because we're eating more out of the garden. Um, so you take your seed and soak it spread it in a tray and then grow it on to where you've got the seed layer at the bottom, no soil, seed layer, and then you've got little stalks and little leaves, and then you break it apart into chunks and give it to your chickens. So we started that process. It's looking beautiful in the greenhouse. Like they're maybe this big right now, an inch tall. So we'll wait until they're about three, four inches tall or so to give it to them. And then we used one of the butternut squash from our root cellar that we grew this last year. And we made some butternut squash bread in the shape of rose muffins. They're so pretty and they're so good. So Bethany, who helps us out here in the garden, um, she brought us in a batch the week prior. And it was kind of this like, I don't know, the light bulb moment. I'm like, why have I never thought to use butternut squash in this way? You could basically sub any recipe that has pumpkin in it, canned pumpkin. It is a little bit lighter than pumpkin, but they are the most moist, delicious muffins ever. So good. So Debbie said, I can't wait to try this recipe. It got me to wondering what other things you can make. What types of meals do you cook fairly often that work for your family? We, tacos. Yeah, we do all the standard stuff burgers. that's easy. <laughs> tacos and burgers a lot because they're easy and fast. We don't have spaghetti that often. No, we don't. But I like it. Yeah, I, I do too. I like a lot of stir fries, like a lot of stir fries over rice. Um, yeah, we do a we lot do. of like chicken and rice mm-hmm. type of meals. Mm-hmm. A lot of roasted root vegetables. Um, roasts, mm-hmm. like in the crock pot, we'll do steak. roasts. We do a lot we of steaks. Love steak. Um, I hardly ever do seafood. I hardly ever really think about it. I, yeah. I like it okay. I don't like all of the seafoods, but seafood. Uh, I like salmon and stuff on the grill. I like that a lot, but we just don't do it very often. I'm trying to think. Like, I I usually try to make a weekly menu plan. Um, so I've got every day, like, listed on a Google Doc here, and then I'll just kind of copy and paste links to recipes I think sound good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll pop some, like, favorites that are quick. Like, tacos are so easy to make, and it takes mm-hmm. me 15 minutes, and we've got dinner, and the kids like it. Um, so I put in some of the favorites, and then 
like maybe three new recipes a week or so. And then I make a shopping list and then I'll either door dash the groceries if we're too busy or I'll run to the store and hopefully have a menu plan. I don't for this week, which has been like last night we had takeout Chinese the week or the night before we had takeout from winger. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get back on, back on the menu plan. But anyway, a next comment. We love the show and watch daily for a couple of years now. Could we see a tour of the chicken coop and the history of the chickens again? We are going to make that video today give you guys a tour and just talk through some of the things that we figured out with our coop and what works for us. Uh, did I see hiring at the Hartley greenhouses online? Probably so. Really? Um, I wouldn't be surprised. They, you know, I talked to somebody over there and they said that they're out at one time. I think they were out a full year. And I think they've closed that gap maybe to like six months now uh -huh. or nine months. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're looking for people to help build the yeah. greenhouses. Uh, Renee said, is Samantha seeming a bit ambidextrous? She stirs with her right hand, but was writing with her left. How awesome would that be? Um, and Bethany is a genius to give you such a great and unique way to use up your bumper crop of squash. Squash. Yes. Yes, she is. Um, Samantha, I think, is primarily right-handed. She primarily writes with she her right She favors her right. Yeah. And she has a really good grip. Like, she has the pencil grip really, mm -hmm. really down nicely. And Benjamin is right-handed as well. My mom was hoping for left. She hopes all of her grandkids are lefties. Yeah. <laughs> She's left-handed. Uh, Jillian said, thanks for the fun video. What is uh, Jillian? That's my middle name. Oh, I don't see that very, that often. Thanks for the fun video. What is the kind of storage containers you have for your baking ingredients? I was just watching the next suggested video and your mom seems to have a similar set with pink covers. They're just like Rubbermaid containers from Walmart. They work really well. I went after all those OXO, like um, the pop top ones. I do not like them. I don't think the, the seals are that great and their grip, unless you have the ones that have like the little indent, but you can like for crackers and cereal, but they don't fit a whole box of anything mm. in them. But like if you get any that are any wider, there's no grip on them and they're so slick that you have to use both hands to get them off the cupboard or off the shelf. And I really wish I would have just gone with the standard Rubbermaid easy. The seal is always tight. They're reliable. I've had those for Years. Years. Betty said, very sweet video. I'm wondering if these muffins taste similar to pumpkin muffins. Extremely similar, except a little bit lighter in like the squash flavor. Mm -hmm. The puree was so smooth too. Like so smooth. Way smoother than pumpkin to me. Uh, and then Based Mom said, what time do you wake up and go to bed? <laughs> because I feel like you're a vampire that never sleeps. It's a little Not bit true. true. Super productive. And I love that you never complain about being tired or doing too much. Um... So I want to be a morning person. I used to be, remember? I used to get up at like five every yep. single morning, uh, but I would go to bed at a more reasonable time. But now I go to bed between midnight and two, usually in the morning. And then I'm usually up between seven, seven thirty, but oftentimes wake up earlier than that. If I hear like anything on the monitor, I'm a super light sleeper. There you go. If you start seeing like the eye bags yeah. grow and grow, you know why. It has gotten more erratic since we have have had kids because yeah. I am super like I'm a like a nervous person by nature with with kids and like you know yeah. constantly checking on them. Um, so that has like kind of messed it up a little bit. Okay, last video is clearing out a few annuals in January. The kids and I got outside and just did a little, like a little bit of annual cleanup in front of the chicken coop. I didn't want to do too much or remove too many leaves because, you know, pollinators and, you know, protection for our plants. Uh, but anything that I know is going to be removed and I'm not messing up any of that business, I'm going to take care of that stuff. And it was uh, really like when I was out in the cut flower garden doing all of the bending and squatting and lifting, I thought, I need to find projects like this to do throughout the winter so I can keep somewhat conditioned enough to pick up in the spring and, and go. Because oftentimes when you are sitting all winter long, those muscles quickly yeah. like don't remember what it feels like to be or you know, to be worked out. So you go out in the spring and start cleaning stuff out and then you can't move for a couple of days because you're so sore. Ugh. I mean it's a good sore in a way, but also not good. Brian and Tammy said, will the cat eat the chickens if they had a chance? I don't think so. I think they're so used to each other. The cats just chill there. And Cheddar's yeah. gotten in a few times and he just walks around like he's just checking it out. And the chickens are kind of like... Our cats don't seem to be aggressive anyway. No, they're aggressive with each other. Like they fight each other all uh, the time. They're just playing, It's like I playful think. fighting. Yeah. Uh, 
Ace has said, I question to you guys in the comment section, does anyone know where Laura bought the stock seed she mentioned? Quartet Rainbow Stock, the best. It um, came from Johnny Seeds. I have a, a little bit left in my packet. So I'm thinking like I need to grow it and bag the blooms. It is open pollinated. So if I gathered the seed from that, I would get Quartet Rainbow again. So I think I'm gonna try that approach with these. Um, I did gather some seed pods the other day when I cleaned those out and I've got those in here in the studio. I spread them out here on the table and let them dry for a couple days and then I put them back in the jar and they're just open, you know, open air around them. The problem with those seeds is that I didn't like bag any. So they were pollinated with, along with all the other open pollinated stock in that same aisle. So uh, it's likely, you know, you gather the seed, you'll get something different, a different color, a different strain. You might get the quartet rainbow again, you never know. I do have a germ test running on our kitchen counter. You put seeds in a pa damp paper towel, keep them damp and just see how many of them germinate just so I can determine how viable those seeds are because they have been put through quite a bit of moisture. So we'll see what happens. I gathering them at the wrong time of the year. You want to do it right at the end of the season when they've dried up, but they haven't been like exposed to a bunch of stuff, a bunch of rain and all of that. So we'll see what happens. Wendy said, can you explain exactly what you do to, oh, to run a germination test? I imagine Andrews does this and I'm sure there's a scientific method. So we usually start a hundred seeds, which is what I did. It came out of five pods. I got a hundred seeds out of five of those pods. Uh, so I have a ton left and you just lay them on a damp paper towel. Uh, we actually have a germinator at Andrews that keeps a specific humidity level so that it doesn't dry out too fast. In my case, I'm just keeping them in a kind of open Ziploc bag on the counter so that it doesn't dry out too fast. And then you just wait however many days it usually takes for them to germinate and then you count how many germinated. Very rough <laughs> germination test. There's probably a more scientific method, but that's just how I'm running it here. That way I can determine like, did 50% of them germinate? If so, then I'll probably add six seeds to my cells instead of just two, <laughs> just to make sure I have one of those seeds germinate. Doesn't Andrew send off seeds yeah. to be tested? All of the farm lab? seeds, yeah. Um, they run germ tests on the seeds in the bins, like the little bulk bins, but like the farm seeds go off to a lab to be germ tested before they are bagged and sold. Because you'll notice on most, I think all packaged seeds, there usually is a germ rate mm -hmm. and they can't sell anything below an 82% germ rate. I thought it was 90. I thought it was 82. Ma, ma, yeah, maybe it's 90. I thought I just heard your dad say something about 90. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. I think he said he had some come in at 82. Mm -hmm. And he told the farmer, like, I can't I can't sell this. Oh, yeah. Because it has to be 90 or above. You're right. Sorry, yeah. I got my numbers messed up. Um, yeah. So you'll see uh, some packets will say 99% germ rate. Some will say 92% germ rate, that sort of thing. Uh, Nezzy said, is there a place where you have listed the best performing perennial flowers? I'm starting a garden this year, vegetable and flower, and would like to start with perennials. We do have a video, like 15 best perennials. Yeah, I think it's maybe even our top, top video yeah. on our channel. I'll link it that. below. Yeah. And last question, Sandra said, have you ever thought of planting asparagus? It's so good when fresh and after harvesting, the plant is so airy and beautiful. I had planted it in the raised beds that were in the driveway, smack in the middle of the driveway. In the shade. In the shade, in front of the chicken coop. And the year that Chad came and knocked in the root cellar, it was a crummy root cellar. It's just where the chicken run is now. So that building, for those of you guys who haven't watched our videos for as long as maybe some of you, um, the chicken coop, now used to be a potting shed you'd walk in the front door and directly to the right there was a little set of stairs like narrow stairs that led down to this creepy root cellar that had a lock from the outside mm -hmm. and you'd go in and it was shaped you know like kind of like this and uh the ceiling had cracks all over in it and there's like moisture coming in and it was just this creepy like non-usable space for us so chad came and knocked that in and at that time he had to plow right through those raised beds because there was no other approach to the that plus they were in the wrong spot they were right underneath the ash tree there's nothing you could really grow production wise i mean maybe some leafy greens mm -hmm. um things like that but it was a really weird yeah we use it much better now i mean yeah. if we use it overflow for annuals in the spring and for parking um Anyway, so I had planted it and I was on year three, which is the year you really get to start harvesting. And it was doing pretty well. It was in the sunniest location of the shady area. It got the <laughs> most sun during the day. Um, so I was bummed about that, but I thought, well, I'll just plant it somewhere else that's more permanent later on. I just haven't done it yet. And that's it. 
for this week's recap video. So remember about the giveaway from Gorilla Carts. Thank you, Gorilla Carts, for letting us do that and for sp sponsoring today's video. So remember to go to gorillamade.com, pick out which uh, cart you like, and then put that in the comment section below and you will be automatically entered. Anyway, <laughs> hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.